Hello, everyone, and welcome to Burn the Ship, the podcast that helps entrepreneurs go all in on their business, and we introduce them to professionals that can help them to do so. Today, we have a very special guest, Bill. Bill, introduce yourself to the crowd. Hey, Rod. My name is Bill Farrow, and I am the chief technical officer or CTO of a new company called Peren, and uh, we track EV charging. Okay, awesome, awesome. Now, Ben, Bill, I know you have such a, a great story, a great journey of how you've gotten to where you are. Tell us a little bit about those steps you've taken to get to Perrin. So, I mean, I, I've had a, a long career um, in the software industry. I've led teams since the late 1980s uh, up until uh, around two years ago. Um, I've had a variety of different uh, 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 jobs and, and roles in, in the software industry. Uh, mostly in the technical leadership uh, realm, and uh, and and really, my journey really started when I left IBM around two years ago, and, okay. and I decided at that time that I wanted to do something for the climate. I had absolutely no idea what it was, but I was in a situation where um, my wife supported me um, in, in that decision, and uh, and I was financially stable enough that I could you know take some time off and try to do something. I had actually never done before. I've worked at a lot of small companies that were post startup, sort of series B, series C round, but I'd never started with a blank sheet of paper. And, and okay. so that's what I did in February of 2022. I just sat out to learn as much as I could about climate. Now I've been driving EVs since 2012. So about 12 or 13 years now. Uh, and, and so I naturally navigated towards the transportation space. And, and okay. how do we electrify transport, transportation? And I started looking at big trucks, little trucks, um, cars, fleets, and, and all kinds of activity. And, and, and around two years ago is when the public charging infrastructure and its lack of reliability really became something that was discussed a lot in, in the press, it came to the forefront. And, um, and, and there was a podcast that I watched that summer, and, and I, I, I'll never forget it. I've written down the quote. It's part of my, my slide deck. But um, a woman said that there is un, a, a, a remarkably shockingly little data in this charging space. And I said, okay, let me see if I can fix that. So I set out on, on this journey to find some data and try to help solve this problem. And along Thanks. the way, I discovered an algorithm that that actually is capable of measuring the health and reliability of EV charging. And then that set on me down a whole nother path of meeting fantastic people on LinkedIn, including you, um, as well as um, as well as meeting some industry uh, uh, insiders uh, who've helped me along this journey. And uh, for a while, I was a solo entrepreneur for the first year and a half, and it became clear to me that I needed to do something if I was going to move the business forward. I was happy having a small business that I kind of built up, but I knew there was other opportunities. And, and that's when I met my co-founder um, and he and I instantly clicked uh, earlier this year. We basically met, uh, met, met virtually met in, in real life, um, spent a week together, uh, decided to join forces, got funding, got accepted to a Stanford um, Graduate School of Business program, and, and and we are you know now expanding our business. Yeah, that is awesome. Now you had a illustrious career uh, with IBM. You were innovating in the software space. Then you um, started thinking about the environment. Seems like, mm -hmm. and then you heard that podcast. Now I'm gonna ask you because the name of our podcast is "Burn the Ship." So at one point something happened that said you're going to burn your ship and go all in on your business is that was that the podcast or was it just your environment that you lived in what would you say was that thing that said you know what i'm leaving this and i'm going into this was it a specific thing that's a great question it was actually one specific thing the podcast the comment um kind of set me down a path but that path I mean, I created an algorithm that I had no idea if it worked or not, or how how broadly reliable it was. Um, and then I met a team from um, from the uh, UC Berkeley, and and another nonprofit in San Francisco called Cool the Earth, and they had done a study that had gotten a lot of press in, earlier in the year, 
that basically they went out and tested 600 charging ports, manually went and tested 600 charging ports with a small fleet of electric vehicles. And they found that 25, 26% of, of the charging stations were not operating properly. Mm-hmm. And, and so I met them and I said to, uh, to the founder of Cool the Earth, Carlene Cullen, I said, what if I could have done that test for you without driving, without sending people out on the road? What if I could monitor and tell you what's happening on those chargers? And, and she got really excited. I mean, she got so excited that we hung up the phone 10 minutes later. She told me she'd call me back the next day, but 10 minutes later, she called me back and said, I have my team assembled. Can we meet on Friday and, uh, and discuss this? So I discussed mm-hmm. it with them and they agreed to send me their raw data. So here I had of, you know, 20 people, uh, boots on the ground, testing 600 charging station, which is a fairly large number. Um, and, and I had the data that I needed to match what they saw versus what I saw. Mm-hmm. I did the data comparison and, 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 and went through that process and found a 90 plus percent match between my algorithm and their results. Matter of fact, okay. I found some, because their, their test was human, I found some human errors where they said they were there, where they couldn't physically have been there. Um, and that happens, that happens in manual. Yes, studies yes, all the time. yes, it's part so, of life. So yeah. 90 plus percent, the next day I, I um, incorporated the business um, and decided that I was going to push this forward. Okay, now it's now we're moving into Perrin now. So if you were to describe what it is that you're doing, is it testing EV stations or tell us a little bit about the business so we can understand truly what you're doing? So so we are a data platform. So so initially, you know, as a solo entrepreneur, I built this data platform. And then now with Perrin and, and with a team, we're looking at how we can expand that platform and how we can use it. Certainly we have data that analysts um, are using. We have customers today that are using the data to help figure out where's the best place to put the next EV charging station based on usage and vehicles that are being sold and all kinds of, of data that, that we bring together. But the, the really big next step that we wanna take and that we're working on with, with, with several uh, partners is when you're driving an EV, there's really five things that you care about when, when you're going on a road trip. You care about is the charger available? Is it reliable? What's the price? What amenities are around that charging station? And what's the safety of that? So those five things really make up our data set. And the you know the key things that that you know initially my my initial uh, company brought to the table were availability and reliability, um, which which are key. You don't want to be driving down, you know, for me it's from North Carolina to to Florida. You don't want to be driving down and finding that you have to stop. And that charging station just is not working, right? Yes. Um, and yes. Unfortunately, that happens far too often. So we are building this platform. And then on top of that platform, we have an API that will allow anybody who is route, who is planning a, a, a trip, whether they're using um, a third-party app or whether they're inside their car, um, that they can call our API and, and find out whether or not the charging station meets your needs. So that's really what our data platform is doing on top of providing, you know, the the base data that we provide to our our analysts today. So who would you say is the ideal target client or person that you would want to get in contact with for your service? Who, who, what does that, a framework of that person look like? We we have three different client sets that, that, that we, that we talk to um, generally. One is, the automakers themselves, and and we're again fortunate enough to have some really key contacts uh, from some folks who are helping our, our business to get us to speak to uh, some of the key automakers. We're also finding that, you know, as the nation's infrastructure gets built out, in 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 the form of government funding, in the form of private investment, there is a growing number of what we call charge point operators, or people who put the chargers in the ground and operate and maintain them. There's also a growing list of, of people who just maintain them. We need them to work. We need them to work reliably. So those those people generally are what we find are uh, find they find our data extremely helpful, um, and, and 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 both in preparing what they're going to build out, but also in evaluating the performance of their station compared to their peers within say a two or five mile area. So, so we call them CPOs or charge point operators are, are okay. one of our key client sets. 
And then the third set is, is uh, state DOT officials that mm -hmm. we've been communicating with some various officials across uh, different states who need to build out their infrastructure based on the government data programs they're getting, but want more, better, faster data that can help them understand um, how their how their investment how our investment dollars our taxpayer dollars are being uh, are being used. Yes. Now you have um, found a business partner. You guys have gotten some funding. You guys are getting going. And I remember when we had our first conversation, you were telling me how you guys were able to get accepted into a, the program at Stanford. Do you mind sharing some of the highlights of how that was a success and how that help, helped you out? I mean, that was fascinating uh, for me. So, you know, we got accepted into a program at the Stanford Graduate School of Business called DYDX. And it's intended to, to bring founders together um, into a three-week uh, mini MBA program. And so they target folks who haven't gone to Stanford Business School. Um, and, and they bring in five of the most prestigious uh, um, venture capitalist companies uh, in the world, in Silicon Valley. Um, they bring in some fantastic speakers, both from the university itself and um, as well as from the industry. And, and, and so we spent three weeks um, in a dorm, in a graduate, you know, graduate level dorm. It was more apartment style than it was just cinder blocks. Um, I hadn't been in a dorm in probably 40 years, but, um, but it was fantastic being on campus, being around some really smart, motivated people, both the people in the class and the professors that were, were, were trying to help us um, understand and learn was not about you know how to write a better application. It was about how to build culture, how to um, how to how to set your goals, how to measure your goals, how to um, um, you know plan out your 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 mission and your values, as well as some communication exercises. And and you know I've been through lots of different uh, training sessions over the course of my career, um, but it's always good to be kept up to speed with the latest uh, latest findings, as well as practice. I found one of the key things uh, in, in some of the sessions we did, I had not practiced standing up in front of a crowd and talking in a while. And I've done that through my whole career, but like any other muscle, it needs to be exercised. And uh, I tell you, I stunk the first time I stood up and had to, <laughs> had to give a 30 minute elevator or 30 second elevator speech. Um, yes. but, uh, but I improved and with the feedback from, from the folks on the ground, um, it was fantastic. Uh, I mean, we, we met Eric Schmidt, who is the former CEO of Google. Um, um, we also had an opportunity to have a very good in-depth conversation with Condoleezza Rice, who is a, uh, involved in the Stanford graduate program. Um, I got to ask her a question. I was very excited nice. about that. Um, nice. and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and we could talk through that answer. And, and again, it was just, it was three weeks filled with just nonstop. The next class was continually better than the previous one. Okay. Awesome. That is an awesome experience. And just like you had that experience that was enlightening to you, I am confident over your career with IBM and now into your new uh, entrepreneurial venture, there has been some skills that you have acquired and nurtured over time. Do you mind sharing one or two of those skills with the audience that could help them on their journey? I think there's a couple of skills um, that I can think of. One is just determination. Um, I'm not necessarily stubborn, but I'm determined, right? I, I, I'm, I'm really give me a mission and I will meet it. The last project I did at IBM was to replace the uh, Federal Reserve Bank's aging ACH system. I spent a lot of time in Atlanta, actually, at the Fed Reserve downtown mm -hmm. um, over the course of this project. My team was the third team, I believe, that attempted to replace this legacy 30-year-old system. And, uh, and, and we were successful. It took longer than, than anyone would have wanted or thought, but we continued pushing forward every day, every minute of every day to make the product as, as good as it can be. Today, that system moves over $3 trillion a month, right? Your paycheck flows through that system. Your parents' social security check flows through that system. If it doesn't work, you would know about it. Um, and for the last three plus years, um, since that's been in, uh, been maybe even four now, I forget, but uh, it's been around. It, it has worked um, nearly flawlessly, and 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 because of the determination of of my team, which kept me going uh, to both lead the technical team and lead the customer facing team. So that that's that's one aspect. 
I, I think the number two is mentorship. Um, IBM was really big on both as, as a manager, you needed to be a mentor, but you also needed to find a mentor up level that could help you grow. Um, and and I, I always loved that program. I love mentoring more than men, being mentored, but, um, but I've actually taken that forward in this startup. So we had the opportunity to hire our very first uh, individual recently. And, uh, and she's a data analyst, data scientist, and I'm not. Uh, I, I mean, I, I pretend to be, but I'm not. So <laughs> I, again, I've made connections and friends uh, at, at, at over the past year and a half. And one of them happens to be um, a fairly uh, robust data scientist leading some pretty interesting things. And, um, and so I asked him to be a mentor of, of my new hire and because I wanted to make sure that she gets a sort of outside opinion of, of how to grow her career. I don't envision she's going to be working at Peren for the next you know, 10 years. Um, I hope she will, but if she doesn't, I want to put her down, send her down a path that she can, that she can grow. So I think those, yeah. those are two of the key things that, that, that I've taken away. Well, thank you so much for sharing. I can definitely agree with both of those skills and highlighting determination. There's going to be objections and roadblocks that's going to happen. It's just a natural part of life. But it's excellent that you can focus on pushing through there because, you know, life happens, business happens. But regardless of what's in front of you, you have to stay determined and push forward. So I definitely appreciate that. Now, with all of this hard work, see, because you've already been through one career, you're going into the next. And I want to focus a little bit on the future. So let's just say uh, we're down the road on Perrin and you are providing all the data for those EV operators, all of those auto dealerships, and things are just rolling. She's still with you for 10 years and she's added her whole team. So now Bill has some time to himself. Bill, what is it that you would do if you didn't have to provide all that data? Um. Two things. Uh, I would still be involved because <laughs> um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I had plans and thoughts of if if this doesn't work out, I can just retire. Right. OK. And, and so um, but in retirement, I I'm not the kind of just going to sit around and watch game shows on TV. Um, mm -hmm. and, and 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 I want to be motivated both technically and, and from an industry perspective. So I would envision 10 years from now, I, there'll be two parts of, of my day. Part number one would be hopefully mentoring and advising on the company that I helped build um, to, to a point. Um, and then the second part would be to keep trying to improve my pickleball game. Okay. Um, I've okay. reached a level where I, it's, it's hard to get better. Um, I'm going <laughs> to play against some really good people and, uh, and they don't generally want to play against with you because you're not good enough. So it's this it's this in between you. thing. Um, you're in the mix. I got to improve my pickleball game. It's all good. I'm sure you have an excellent <laughs> slice in forehand. I'm sure it's 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 magnificent. Now, uh, Dan, uh, Bill, I'm sorry, Bill. Uh, with the people that are watching today, if they want to learn more about Perrin and or if they want to talk with you about some of your experiences you've had in the past. How is it that they can get in contact with you? The best way to contact me is through LinkedIn. Um, okay. So I'm Bill Farrow, F is in Frank, E-R-R-O. Um, I've used that platform as my community builder. If somebody reaches out to me on LinkedIn, if they're, as long as they're not trying to sell me something, I will contact them and I will, I will go back to them. It's, it's my way of paying it forward for everybody who, who helped me along this journey. Um, so that, that's the best path uh, uh, that, that, that we can use. All right. Now, again, we appreciate you sharing your insights and your knowledge. And to honor our guests, we always give them the last word. So you can please look into the camera and uh, tell the folks who are watching today something good. Um, uh, can I say two things? That was many as you like. All right. Those are two things. <laughs> Number one is be kind. Um, okay. and, and, you know, we're in a, a, a divisive election season. Um, it's okay if your neighbor is not voting for your candidate. Um, you know, you can be kind and, and, and have civil civil conversation. So, so that's number one. Um, and, and, and number two is, and I'll, I'll give you this one for free um, because I haven't done it yet, but I'd love to start a podcast just called Hope. Um, okay. and, and because there's so much climate uncertainty out there and, and, and there are you know, people who are you know, just 
very down because of where we are. Both you see the fires out west, you see the tornadoes uh, out east, um, and the flooding uh, everywhere. Right, all caused by increase in 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 the CO two emissions that have led to the change of our climate. There is hope, and and, and I spent a lot of my time listening to podcasts out there from really smart people who are doing really great things to change the way that our uh, that that we work and live and and uh, and you know I'm happy to be a very small part of that. Yeah, those are excellent words. I think that what I'm going to do Bill is actually take that first one, be kind and make it my outro. So <laughs> I'm going to practice it right now. So we <laughs> truly do appreciate you coming on today and sharing um, there is a lot of innovation that is to come with the EV stations. I see them being put up all over the place. Uh, we're in Ackworth, Georgia, and I've seen two go up in the past year. Uh, and I can see what you mean as far as the locations and their very safe areas, their round amenities. So all of those things that you said are great. So we definitely appreciate you sharing that today and coming on and, uh, to the audience. Uh, thanks for watching, and to Steel Bill's line, be kind. <laughs> thanks. Thank you, Rob.